How do award shows normally start? Start with this. Well, boys. Well, everyone. Well, well, well. <laughs> well. I really wished you had stopped it the second one, <laughs> but that's not how the bit goes. Welcome to the Crucies. They say that episode 199 is the most important show in the show's history, and we beg to differ. Um, we have assembled a list of awards that we'll be awarding to ourselves, Mm -hmm. to each other, Mm -hmm. to inanimate objects, Mm -hmm. to timestamps. And uh, we chose them by thinking of as many as we could and then deleting any that we couldn't think of answers for. (laughs) And we're still thinking of them. What about most number of chips eaten in the middle of an interview? Oh, Who won that? You'll never know. Not a real award. Most number of chips. I always count my chippies when I eat them. <laughs> it's uh, more or fewer. It, the bag's empty, actually. How do you? Way. You just have a bag of chips on hand for that go. joke. Uh, that actually was ready a bag go. of sour patch watermelon. Ki- oh, that's better. <laughs> <laughs> was, and the beer is also watermelon. <laughs> wow. Yeah. If there's anything I've learned about chefs, it's that they make delicious food all day and then. <laughs> Fill them spills full of watermelon for some candy with the boys. Um, another point of note as we get this show on the road is that we couldn't find any celebrity that wanted to host this one. Uh, no one yeah. was interested. I mean, we messaged Billy Crystal on Twitter and yep. he said no. And uh, uh, he did say no. He did say no. He did say no. Did say no. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it was probably an intern just responding no, like in mass to DMs. Yep. Uh, Ricky Gervais, did he said yes, we passed. No hard yeah, feelings. people do not like him. It's just a bit much. He's fine. Just a bit much. Um, so we're going to do these. Yeah, we'll uh, host them. It's also yeah. us in the audience that will be coming up to accept the awards. <laughs> Woo! Oh, uh, great show. Uh, there's that guy. He's here. <laughs> yep, old crank show yeller. And uh, Andrew's like silently listening in the background, probably. He's backstage. He's making sure the lights uh, mm-hmm. happen and he's going to be playing people off if their acceptance speeches go too long. Uh, yeah, just in general, Andrew, if the energy ever dips, just like play the music. <laughs> yes. just, like, keep, I like keep it going. I like to think that every time we've like had Andrew do something for us, like, in the episode like we're like hey andrew can you uh insert you saying something here and it's him at like 11 p.m on a sunday <laughs> just <laughs> absolutely <laughs> just so tired and he's just sitting there and he's just like are you kidding me <laughs> there's <laughs> definitely a part recently like maybe last week where I was like, yeah, and there'll be some funny music. Like, there's probably funny music playing right now. Right, Andrew? And there was none. <laughs> and it was just me <laughs> talking over silence. And honestly, it was funny. So it ended up being the right call. That is a good call, Andrew. Uh, but Andrew, we do need awards show music at least once. So please find an awards <laughs> yes, show song. God, please. <laughs> find a seven second <laughs> clip and just keep on dropping just it. Sleep it. Yeah. Um Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for tuning in. With no further ado, let me welcome you to the first ever and almost certainly last. (laughs) Definitely the last. Crucible Radio Awards Show, The Crucies. Uh, I'll present this first award, and it is the award for the best intro bit. Uh, how oh, appropriate. Wow. This is the intro. Wow, right? <laughs> wow. Wow, you say. And how could how could we pick just one? Uh, the point is, uh, we'll probably pick we're, a lot more next we're week. We're saving but, more for next week. <laughs> uh, this one is really good. It involves some of Andrew's best editing. Uh, sure. it, it 
it's one of those times where we record it, we laugh, but then it's even better once we hear it on the show. And it genuinely made us laugh really hard. Uh, so this, this is listening back to this one at the end, I crack up laughing and I crack up laughing, listening to myself, crack up laughing. Yeah. And they're more or less in sync. It's a vicious cycle, but the winner for the best intro bit, what was it called? Oh, is there a drum roll here? The Faction Wars Recruitment on episode 110. Roll the clip. What does the future bring? We alone have the answer. It has always been war. War between humans. War between species. War between light and darkness. War is the fundamental fabric of the universe. Dare we defy it? Will you help us prepare? Join Future War Bones. All right, all right. Swain, what you got? Do you like meat and need? Have you ever gazed towards death itself and found strength? The stars are calling, Guardian. Join Swain Orbit today. I think I just lost my appetite. Listen up, brothers. In Burt's Monarchy, we're gonna slice them. We're gonna dice them. We're gonna take those pansies from Swain and Bones' things, and we're gonna crush them. We're gonna chop off their butts and stick them up their remaining butts. A- All right, guys, you know, just give me five minutes. We'll get started recording here. I'm gonna go make a mimosa real quick. I'll be right back. Oh, my God. I didn't think people would latch on to it like this. I they, know. Like the... The, the the level of competition alone. We They're haven't even played a single match so against each other serious. yet. I don't want to so fight seriously. you guys. I just want to hang out and play some Destiny. We're all friends. I know. Can we, are we allowed to be friends anymore? I don't. We have to like be friends. I'm in pretty private. sure Dan killed Ankle. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. I'm ready to go. Let's get rolling here. Welcome to Bird's Monarchy, the home of crushing and smushing and fighting and slicing. <laughs> Andrew. <laughs> I was uh, I'm going to accept this award on behalf of professional wrestler Birds myself. Um, I, you know, I love crushing, I love smushing, I love slicing, dicing, fighting, biting, cutting I love off all butts, of it. <laughs> chopping off butts, <laughs> doing stuff with the butts that you chopped off. I don't know. I like talking to professional wrestler voice. It's what it's all about. It's just, you know, it's who, it's who I am. Andrew, start playing the music now. It's, uh, you know, ultimately, I got to thank my manager. I got to thank, um, I, uh, Free Mumia. Well, you'll hear a lot more next week when we have a chance to listen to uh, more intro bits. Here's the thing, folks. You, we wanted to pick out the best joke, the funniest moment of all time. And then you remember, uh, 200 episodes worth of podcasts, each an hour and a half long. It's too much. We'll never find it. (laughs) There's no way for us to compare all of it. Or even if someone remembers a very funny moment to recall when that occurred and on what day and on what timestamp of that episode. So we had to just go by memory here. All right. There's a lot of episodes. (laughs) That works. Yep. What's next? (laughs) Uh, I think um, I would like to present the next trio of awards. Um, these are awards for us, the very hosts ourselves. Up first, this award is for the host who is the best dressed. Ooh. He's looking so good. He's looking so fine. Everyone's looking at him and thinking, oh, my, my. Uh, this one, um, I think this one, uh, there's really, there's really no, there's really no real choice here because Bonesy, you remember, you remember like I did that first time we all laid our little eyes upon each other in person for the real time. Mm-hmm. We were driving a rental car. We were driving to arrivals. And who should we see standing there on the side of the terminal, a tall drink of water, looking all cool with his cool clothes that fit and make him look like a person who knows how to dress himself? Can't be us. It's Swain. Congratulations, oh, Swain. Thank you. I'd like to thank Zara for making clo- clothes that actually fit me. I feel like that sentence has never been uttered before. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, not I have the opposite like sentiment. <laughs> Uh, I also want to immediately present this next award for biggest bungee shill. As you know, 
uh, we have a long-standing relationship with Bungie that is based off of, uh, I would say, fundamentally friendship, a mutual respect, a love of in-depth conversation, but also a little pay for play. We say the <laughs> things they want us to say. They send us copy each week, and we read it verbatim, and we do it in our voices. And in return, they send uh, what was what was this that we decided the the uh, the, the layers. crest. The trident, trident layers. layers. They send us trident layers. <laughs> it's a uh, grift as old as time. But I think there's truly one of us who shines, where even the others were starting to wonder, can I really can I really say this in good faith? Can I really say these things? There was always one person willing to go to Pat. This next award goes to the one and only Mr. Swain himself. Congratulations, <sighs> Thank Swain. you, thank you, thank you. Uh, there Fucking would probably chill. be no Bungie interview without me. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> big swings! Using your acceptance speech to take big swings. I like it. Uh, and this last one, um, this one, you guys, was a matter of some debate before the show. <laughs> Still is. This one, of course, is our best attendance record by hosts. And here we realized that we had a choice. We could go through 200 episodes and count up who was on each one. And uh, come up with a number, or we could just argue about it, not come to a conclusion, and, then vote and on instead it. just vote. So uh, I think we're going to take the vote right now. Uh, Bones, who do you vote for? For best, best attendance, attendance on the show? I vote for Bones. I, I mm. don't think that is accurate. I think uh, it is. Swain, who do you vote for? I vote for me. <laughs> oh, well, then Bertsy gets to choose the winner. Um, <laughs> this is this is how the tally works. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Democracy is all fucked up when there's only three people and lots of conspiracies. I love how um, you immediately but indirectly just seceded to the chance that you are definitely not the winner of this, I, <laughs> this I, award. I, I will be honest. I the I am definitely not the winner of this one. <laughs> I'm definitely not. I love B Bones. You're never here for it, but Birds gets really mad when you're not here. <laughs> I did the first time. I did the first time <laughs> because like, I felt guy, very put who upon. Who does he think he is? And I'm, I'm just put, sitting there like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> so no, I, I you know what Bones? You taught me a valuable lesson, which is that. There's a perfectly reasonable reason for not wanting to do an episode of simply not feeling like it, <laughs> yeah. of not being in the mood to record a podcast episode that was scheduled well in advance. It turns and, out uh, I had to take a mental upset. health day. Took a mental health day, and then I was upset for exactly as long as it took for me to realize I also had that option. Yes. And then I, I started claiming that option, and it was nice. So it definitely wasn't me. I think probably if it was best attendance records by hosts who were fully awake for the whole episode, oh, uh, Bones, you might have it. But in terms Here's of- Here's the thing, man. When I was here, I was being, here. I was 100%. <laughs> it turns out in order to qualify, you just need to lie silently in your bed chair and next to a microphone. I'm going to have to say the winner. Let's start recording three hours from now. Let's see how good you're doing. <laughs> I'm ready, man. Do you think I get to sleep on time? <laughs> yeah, I don't either. <laughs> Let's move on. Swain picking up the hat trick. Congratulations. Like fucking Michael Phelps. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Phelps who got the award for showing up in the pool the most often. But Not sleeping. Only swimming. Best, I'm Just, also wearing his, a Speedo. That's why I his got the arms, best dress. His arms up on the side of the pool and the goggles on, so you can't really tell if his eyes are open or not. And he's just like nodding <laughs> off. Just, he's painted circles <laughs> under the front of his Occas goggles. Occasionally his nose goes below water and it wakes him up and he's like. <laughs> That's what swimming's <laughs> all about. Swain, Swain is just like that Olympic athlete. Uh, all right. Well, what else? Can I win one? Uh, well, this next section Those here, were the guest uh, ones, sorry. <laughs> we are on, uh, if you guys didn't realize, this is, at least for a little bit longer, Crucible Radio, the show for all things Destiny PvP. Pay attention, that will be relevant in a little bit. But as part of our, our responsibilities and our God-given right, we 
have opinions about a video game on this show. This next section is looking at some of those takes that we've had over the years, how they turned out. <laughs> yeah, but you can win one. <laughs> yeah, you just played Why did I 100% ask? this one. <laughs> so, uh, for worst hot take. Bones with the doctrine of passing. I think we're going to need to hear the clip. I don't even know when the clip was. I'm pretty sure that happened on stream. On yeah, that happened on stream. Okay, how about the, the clip of the Noosk interview when it was all fresh in our yeah. memory? Well, you can look it up and maybe it just happened. But look. Just control F Noosk. He, he, he <laughs> called me out for Does it. it work with audio? When he was, uh, he was watching the stream and this was after a big change and this was uh, auto rifles were a hot topic and I used the doctrine of passing and I said on stream, well, auto rifles still suck. And, and put then it away. within two weeks, doctrine of passing is something that like sweaty kids want to ban because it's just like auto aim and too easy. This is an auto rifle, by the way. And in, in like later D1 meta, when they are just completely garbage most of the time. But look, doctrine of passing uh, had a learning curve. It was different than every other quote unquote good auto rifle at the time. And yeah, I used it for half a game on on, on the 618 map. All right. I, it's there. It's that fault. You tried to use it on a, a widow's court too. And that's when you took it off. Uh, I remember the exact screen uh, I was looking at. <laughs> Bones, great use of your acceptance speech. Congratulations on your reward. This is me clapping for myself, by the way. If in case, in case it's been hard to tell where those sounds are coming from. Bones has got very uh, loud hands. You're welcome. Um, well, sometimes we do predictions on the show that aren't meant to be stupid and aren't as super scrubby as maybe they've been at, uh, at other times. But sometimes things just don't happen. And I feel like there's probably moments when we were like, Destiny 2 is coming out. I bet this subclass is going to be insanely good. And turns out it just wasn't. Maybe it never was. Uh, but there, there was a time, I guess, in the past where really we thought maybe people will pick up on this great, great strategy. And was it a good strategy? Yeah. Did people pick up on it? No. No, no. Yeah, no. No. <laughs> Yeah, this one, uh, this one, I think, was a real roller coaster ride because uh, it came early in the history of the show. If you listened last week, you heard it. We even did a whole YouTube video with him about it. We really did. We thought it was going to take off, and by all accounts, it certainly could have. It still might, but uh, our predictive powers are not the best. This next award for least accurate prediction goes to... Mr. Fizzer and the setup meta, and I will be accepting on his behalf. Thank you. Um, here's the thing. <laughs> Fizzer came from the Halo world, and in competitive Halo, it's understood that there are spots on the map that are more powerful than others. Certainly this is true. Those power positions, <laughs> people know them. They use them to their advantage. But uh, in a Halo, teams will spend the whole match fighting to control the single most dominant set of positions, control the spawns there, and then uh, hold it for the whole game and uh, just shut the other team out. I've seen it happen. It's very effective. Uh, did not take off. Was not popular. Uh, the sweat paradigm of uh, get a pick, close in, rotate around, split the spawns, rinse, lather, repeat. It won out. And uh, we'll just, we'll never know what the world could have been. Yeah, I think it just like fundamentally goes against what a lot of players want out of a shooter and especially one with the sort of mobility that Destiny has. Because I mean, uh, yeah, if you have being aggro, right, if you have three people all on the team or even six, you could do it in quick play. If you had everyone just agreeing that that's what you were going to do, it just like wouldn't fail. But it's very hard to convince six Destiny players that they're not allowed to hold forward and shotgun. And people are very good at that. That's not even a, a a hot take on shotgunning. But yeah, didn't take off. Oh, well, we'll never know. Hey, look, sometimes we miss, but sometimes we we get them right. We really uh, we really uh, put the bean in the can, if you know what I mean. What? Up next is our award <laughs> for... We're just going to skip over that? Up, uh. up uh, next is our award for most accurate prediction. It's definitely and, not uh, that catchphrase. Well... <laughs> 
wasn't a prediction. It's going to take off. People <laughs> say things sometimes. <laughs> All words are made up. <laughs> you know, uh, we've taken some guesses. I think some of them were well supported. Some shook out. Some didn't. But, uh, well, this next one was eerie. He really put the bean in the can on this one. God. Uh, winning the award for most accurate prediction was Bones for writing the whole plot of D2 <laughs> out before the game came out. Surprisingly, just, just to a T, really kind of nailed it. Yeah, that uh, definitely uh, took me by surprise, too. If you want to listen to it, it's called The Towers Fall. I know it's on an episode of CR, but it's also on our YouTube channel. Just search Crucible Radio, The Towers Fall. And it was uh, our first attempt at a sort of radio play. I think I just did all the voices. Most of it was just narration, you know. Birds, you you edited it. Oh, g- I- gave us a taste of what would come for JV. Uh, but yeah, the plot was that the tower gets like destroyed and uh, a new threat arrives. And then that happened in that first trailer. And I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. I saw it coming. Yep, you even had the you had a Zavala bubble in there and everything. Yeah, yeah, that's actually yeah. true. It was like weirdly, it took place in the same place that first mission takes place, like where Zavala's bubble is and stuff. Yeah, like on the tower courtyard area. Uh, it's pretty weird. And JV came out before D two, pretty accurate as well. Well, moving right along. Uh, I'm reading ahead a little bit and realizing that these kind of form a section, if you will, a section of things. These are our awards for editing. Can we get, we, speaking of editing, can we just like give a look behind the curtain? You know, I mean, we're almost done with the show, right? Let's, let's give people a glimpse at what really happens. So right now we're looking at a spreadsheet where birds listed all of the awards, then numbered them, but out of order. <laughs> and now also not one <laughs> through 20, and the exact number of awards, but any number between one and a hundred <laughs> out of order. So if you want to find the next one, it's anywhere on the list and it could be oh. any number higher than the number you were just oh, you doing. You guys can't see that? You guys can't see that? Oh, okay. Uh, well, you have to you have to sort them. It's a sort key. It doesn't matter that they're sequential. Why do I have to do more work? Load a high. Okay. Well, here, let me let me let me let me sort this for you guys. You guys are gonna see, and it's gonna it's gonna all of a sudden make sense to you. This is really gonna this is really gonna make it work for you guys. Here, check this out. Click away, anonymous that. wombat. Yep, that's me, old really wombat. Putting putting the beans in the can. Uh, here we go. I think I got a screenshot of that Boom. before. <laughs> so this is what I've been looking at the whole time. Okay, now uh, it makes sense. Yeah, right? Not a bad system. Uh, of course, you didn't hear any of that conversation because Andrew edited it out. No, he didn't. <laughs> well, he tightened it up at least. There is just cutting out the ums and ahs. But sometimes... You have to go above and beyond and spend the whole fucking weekend editing one of these things, putting in little dibs and dabs, little doodly doos to make the uh, make the episode pop. Because look, we are a high production podcast, I believe. Uh, <laughs> up next for this next award, best episode editing effects. This is that sound of the room. Goes to JV. Yay! <laughs> I win! <laughs> I win! Birds, you did me? it. You created the best editing we've ever heard on this show. It took all fucking weekend, you guys. <laughs> you do not know how, like, if you've ever tried to, like, go to YouTube and Google, like, wind sounds and just get, like, the sound of some good wind and then you don't, so you try and fix another one that you get where the mic's all clipping and then put that way in the background to, like, add ambiance for, like, Bones Mary Sue in his way across the tops of buildings fighting bad guys and make it all feel good. It takes all weekend. Let's yeah. move along. I wrote a long script for that, man. That was like 15 pages. Well, it's not the best script award. It's the best episode. Oh, wow. I, effects. Yay, at I least win. you said award after that. <laughs> uh I think we um I think we do have to, of course, give an honorable mention here. Because look, Andrew. I do get to uh, choose some of the words. I gave myself this one, but in terms of editing the episode every fucking week, Andrew, we, uh, 
I was going to say, we can't pay you enough. We actually can pay you enough. Well, we literally can't pay you enough. We, we pay you what we can, but we appreciate you deeply. <laughs> and I believe we should call out um, Andrew's uh, immortal work on the Halloween episode. He took a spooky This was so time. good. I heard this at, um, I, I get the episode at midnight on Sunday and I listened to it and I was like, I'm more jacked up than I've ever been. And I stayed awake for like another two hours. Andrew, um, uh, let, let's go ahead and play a clip from that Halloween episode. Give us a little taste. What was your favorite moment from it? There's, it's just spooky start to finish. Welcome to the podcast for all things PvP. Destiny is now on console and PC. Swain Birds and Bones are here to chat to help you get better at making brains splat. Now settle on in, let's help you survive. In the crucible, that is, no time for the hive. With a show for you if you're often dead. So listen up now, it's time for Andrew to shred. Last life, this is it. annihilated them good and uh up next to present this uh this next award is uh actually believe it or not mr andrew himself uh presenting the award for hardest episode to edit and i don't know how specific he wants to be (laughs) because we all know exactly who he's talking about because we were there too and texting each other at the time we out. This is going to be a chewy one on the Andrew's uh, coming out from backstage and he's walking up to the mic. Andrew, go for it. Hey guys, uh, thanks for having me on the show to present this awesome award. At least it's awesome for me to talk about it because it was a very dark weekend of mine. Uh, this was the Battle Bros episode. It was really fun. Talked about fusion rifles and you know they were the fusion heads back in the day. And uh, yeah, they were recording. Both of them were in the same room recording uh, with two separate mics. Uh, opposite side of the rooms but those mics were definitely facing each other and all it was was just one person's voice going into the other person's mic and it was a very long weekend but it was a good episode it turned out really well but uh, yeah I didn't shower or sleep for two days and well more than that probably and yeah so that was it so congratulations Battle Bros thanks Andrew glad to hear from you bud that truly was the hardest Whatever Andrew said, <laughs> sure was. <laughs> he sounded great and happy. Anyways, you know, we got intro bits on this show. We do lots of jokes. Uh, sometimes we just say things and then we say them again. And that's kind of our shtick. Honestly, if you look back on all the episodes is uh, saying a word and then repeating it. But one of the okay. first times we ever sort of uh, made a joke if you will, is when one of us, and truly, who knows who was first, yeah, uh, go tried to listen. pronounce the word niche. <laughs> and all of us sort of thought, I don't know if that was right, but I'm not <laughs> smart enough to tell you it's wrong. Yeah, so we tried them out. <laughs> or three. <laughs> and we it's started repeating it. Surprisingly, on a, a podcast where you are talking about a niche topic, Literally, it gets the, talked about a lot. Yes, and uh, it becomes a recurring bit. So the longest running bit goes to that time we started saying niche and have been calling it out every time I think it ever comes up. Uh, niche, whatever. Do you guys remember when uh, Destiny Two came out and we renamed the show Crucible Radio Two and we officially retired the niche bit? Did we? And then, did we? I believe we did. And we, just we just ignored that. Started doing it again. <laughs> <laughs> I just remember how many times, like a guest, honestly thought we were correcting them and then repeated what they said, and we yeah. were like, "Ah, oh, ooh," mm, and we just yeah. sort of like let them feel awkward for a second. There's definitely been times that they've added a different, <laughs> yeah, and it's it. like they're doing the bit, but they think they're just fixing it. Oh, poor guys. Mm-hmm. Well, good sports, all. Um, of course, we have seems to like something out. true Vanguard would fall for. Yes. Sweet boy. 
But look, they can't all be the longest running bits. I know well, well, well. I know you wanted to be longest running bit, but that's why we have this next award. And also hardly a bit. (laughs) (laughs) For best supporting bit. They can't all be niche. There's others in there. And so it is with, well, it's with uh, a lot of joy that I (laughs) give this award to this next bit. It's a classic. You've heard it time and time again. Oh, God. It happens very often at the beginning of the episode. You already know what I'm going to say. It's Swain saying, your source for all things Destiny (laughs) PvP instead of the show for all things Destiny PvP week after week after week, which is the worst way to say it. (laughs) It is a show. If I had to introduce the show today, I would probably still say it. But you didn't start until like episode 60. Like we Not had done it, done it for years. <laughs> and then suddenly it was just like, wow, this, where did that source part come from? It just showed up. I love it. I just, I'm imagining Swain falling asleep in front of the TV with like an infomercial playing for, for, <laughs> I don't know, some source related thing, hearing that phrase 500 times over the course of the night. And then, um, and this is just an argument as to why you shouldn't let me intro the show. Deal. Good point. We'll use that going forward with the new show. Our next category is for best recurring segment. And this really pains me to give this award because <laughs> uh, I'm so reluctant with enjoying this. And even before when we were voting on what this recurring segment was, uh, I kind of had my arm twisted by him uh, <laughs> for it. Uh, congratulations, birds. It's for the birds travel report. <laughs> yes, I did it. Here's the thing about this bit is that I will go on the it's road. Not a bit, it's in best recurring segment. Recurring segment. I would go on the road. But then, lo, I would return, <laughs> and I'd be back, and I would I would sing every time, birds are back in town. And then I would have song. to <laughs> tell a story from the road. And you guys knew it was coming, and you could not be less excited to hear my story from the road. I could see yourself just prepping, just prepping for a story you believe would not be funny I'm and already go on half too long. Asleep. Please yep. tell me all Nothing like a somehow, Stories right from the Road podcast where the road is like business trips to Nebraska. All every single time. Uh, no, there was I was in Atlanta a couple times. You went to the untamed wilds of Seattle. Atlanta was point. the time you got drunk and showed up on the show. Yeah, that was fun. That was fun. I also went to the Ukraine once. I don't talk about that. But uh, I feel like I put a lot of effort into picking them out and that they ended in a laugh. Sure, maybe it took a while to get there. But uh, I had a plan. Like those Cylons in Battlestar Galactica, I had a secret plan the whole time, but not for this speech I'm giving now. So Dang I can reference. play the music. <laughs> I miss the Kevin updates. Oh, yeah, Kevin updates. Uh, I actually have a Kevin update. No. So he got rehomed uh, with uh, a, uh, a co-worker of Mrs. Birds who keeps rabbits. You guys know this. Several months of them being trained to not kill each other. Um, and then we got a bit of an update. They kill uh, each other. Got- <laughs> 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 no. Uh, however, Kevin did have to go to the vet uh, because he was feeling sick and he wasn't eating. Oh, and no. uh, it turns out they renamed him Bailey. Which uh, I will n- <sighs> never say. I will call him Kevin Bun Bun until the till the day we both die um, together <laughs> at the same time. Um, and we thought, out we thought it could have been this time for Kevin, um, but it turns out he just had a bunch of extra poop in his butt that wasn't coming out. So they took that out, and he's fine. He's back. Wow, Wonderful. good for him. Way to get rid of that poop in your butt. <laughs> we pooped it on out. The fans will be thrilled to hear this. (laughs) You know, moving on, guys, there's something that we run into as hosts of Crucible Radio all the time. And we have since the show began, basically. And that's when we meet someone IRL or in real life and we tell them what we do. We mention our day jobs and then we talk about hobbies or what turns out to be a pretty significant side job. 
and we say, well, we host a podcast. And they say, oh, cool. What's, What's it about? It about? <laughs> well, and well. they uh, nod their head and you can already tell that their eyes glaze over. And suddenly the second you say uh, video game or destiny or whatever PVP, they're checked out. So someone then asked, well, you know, what's the best clip to listen to for a non-listener? And our answer to that, and uh, I guess also the award winner, because this is an award, is uh, the the best clip from Crucible Radio to listen to for a non-listener is the first 10 minutes of every episode and the last five minutes of every episode. <laughs> Congratulations, first 10 and last five. You're, you're the best chunks out of every week. Yep. For if people you don't, don't old family care <laughs> about this. Yep. Yeah, it just gets so thick in the middle there. But, the but, but for everyone that listens through the center, the, you know, the meaty, juicy center, they might be familiar with another section of the show. Now, Ooh. we don't often phrase it as the break it once was. You know, the format changes, but you hear it at the beginning. You hear it somewhere in the middle if we're transitioning to our guest. But uh, something Crucible Radio started doing right off the bat is uh, very, very early on was get music from different artists almost every <laughs> week. It was either that or Wildcats every week. And that was it was that or my band Wildcats that you can check out at wildcats.bandcamp.com. We have over 50 albums. <laughs> <laughs> the, it, it, they're very prolific. It is the most important adjective I could use to describe them. Look, if you needed a new song for every episode of a podcast that went 200 episodes long, Wildcats would literally solve that no problem and yeah, would have about 4,000 extra songs <laughs> once you used all of them, all 200. But no. This actually, uh, this started in episode three. We started playing guest music. Actually, the pilot uses a song I made on my computer by myself. It was never ah. uh, actually Wildcats or anything else. Uh, good little jam there. But yes. It, beca- it just became a ritual, you know, when we put out a message on the show, gave a shout out to the artist we used and asked for more submissions and people would email us. We would get, you know, solo artists with their stuff or we would get bands. They say, yo, I play Destiny. I heard you on the show. Would be awesome if you played our band. And we said, hell yeah, we don't care. I don't think people necessarily realize that every single piece of music you've ever heard on Crucible Radio was either made by us, by a listener or by a friend of us or a friend of a listener. There's always no more than one degree of separation between us yeah. and the music you hear, which is fucking amazing because there's yeah. some great music on here. Yeah, like if we had to, we'd know the name of the person creating it, you know, like we always did. And that was really awesome. And, uh, you know, I think all of them have been great. Truly, there's been so much good music. And we've done entire episodes where we just sort of hi- highlight some of the best. But we just wanted to personally give a shout out slash award to the, just our personal favorites, man. We just love good jams. Birds, what's yours? I uh this is a tough one for me. Um I have I've been honored to participate in the growth of Hawk over the years. I do love them, but there is one in particular that gave me goosebumps. Uh they're from Australia. They are heavy AF and everyone around me gets very upset when I put them on. Uh, but it is a band called Pagan, and they fucking slap. I like it. Go listen to them. Swain, what about you? Uh, mine is one that I actually asked them to, If I asked them if we could play them on the show. It's a friend of my wife's uh, is in the band, and it is called Louie Louie. Well, did he? Well, fun, fun, fun jam. Well, I have to give a huge shout out to a few guys that became, you know, friends of ours throughout this process. And I'm pretty sure they were played on their show uh, more than anyone else. And that's because they've just been cranking out EPs and albums. And I follow them on Spotify and have those notifications before the songs are even out. And they, they just, oh boy, they fill all of the... All of the goodness up inside me. Uh, that's odd, folks. Why? It's been a long time since I think like episode. I want to say seventy-five, maybe even earlier, probably earlier. But we got them on the show. We birds and I. We met them in L.A. when they came out and were on tour, 
And since then, it's just been awesome. And, you know, keep in touch with them on social media and stuff. Cool. So shout out to Odd Folks. Good jams, man. Till the end. Excellent. It's entirely possible that we've played every Odd Folks song across three <laughs> albums on this show. That is very, very possible. Well, uh, uh, with this one, we have now entered the segment where we give awards to other people who are not us or things that have happened at some point. Uh, you just heard best music, but, uh, you know, we have people on this show on an ongoing basis Whoa. who give us advice on playing this video game. Now, uh, this next award, if you're familiar with Destiny, which I'm assuming you are, you may remember uh, something. I forget the details, but it's called Hella Good Advice. I'm fairly certain HGA for those in the know. Yeah, they always uh, use it on Reddit and stuff. It's from D1. It's a reference. Yeah, it's it's very much a Bring reference. Bring back the hella good advice for Destiny 2. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> Remember that was trending, am I right? Uh, now, this is a toughie because we've gotten a lot of great advice over the years. Um, I believe my, my personal best advice I've ever gotten on this show uh, belongs not to our winner, but to close personal friend of the show, Mr. Keen Koala, because he just says things that I remember for the rest of my life. He has that effect on people. But uh, I think we have to really think about the big picture. Who really understood this game and just gave that top-to-bottom advice that uh, he just he just put the bean in the can? That's as simple as that. God damn it. Uh, <laughs> You see, you're warming up to it now. You start to come around. It does. It certainly fits. Um, it's like the worst boomerang. <laughs> here we go, guys. For number 98. <laughs> Understand number 98. Not a meaningful number if you're not looking at the same spreadsheet. Actually not super meaningful for us. For the award. Hella good advice. It's the one and only Mr. Cap. 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 Hey everybody, Cap here. Just wanted to say thank you for selecting me for the Hello Good Advice Award. It was an absolute blast getting to work on that episode. And uh, just all the comments I've received from people afterwards, but more importantly, just seeing the improvement that you all have made, both as individuals and as a community. Uh, it just, it's, it's an amazing thing to see. Even almost five years into this game's life cycle, uh, people still making strides. So hey, keep out there, keep working hard. I'll be around. And I look forward to the future of what Crucible Radio and what it evolves into will bring us. Thanks. Well, folks, we are nearly there. To the end of the show. We've still got two more awards to give for people who have made appearances on the show. However, we need to give a shout out to our sponsor this week. Winner of Crucible Radio's... <laughs> Favorite sponsor and winner of the sponsor who decided to sponsor this very episode you're listening to. Got to give a big old cruisy shout out to Casper. Casper. Now, folks, Casper is a sleep brand that continues to revolutionize its line of products to create an exceptionally comfortable sleep experience one night at a time. And uh, let's be clear, that's no joke. These are comfy mattresses. And I think we've come to understand how good a night's sleep can be on a Casper through discussing the merits of these Casper mattresses live on the show. It's given us such classic jokes as Swain and his natural geometry, which must be cradled closely because, look, Casper's got three mattress models, the Casper, the Wave, and the Essential. Not to mention the breathable design helps me... And you sleep cool and regulate your body temperature throughout the night, which is amazing for the upcoming hot times of summer and spring. And it fits you even if Zara doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they're also winning an award tonight for being things that are delivered to your door that are very big, but they fit in a very small box. It is really quite convenient. If you've ever tried to schlep a mattress up a flight of stairs around a tight corner, or even just move it around on your own, you'll know it is a challenge. But uh, they deliver it into a small, how do they do that size box? 
Uh, and look, free shipping and returns in U.S. Canada, that's an award. Um, they've got a 100-night risk-free sleep on a trial. That's an award right there. And uh, after all, you spend a third of your life sleeping. That's an award for you, listener. If you do a good job of it, you really, you really get that sleep going. Do it right on a Casper mattress. Look, they're just comfy. They're just comfy, good mattresses for sleeping. You like to sleep. If you don't have a Casper mattress, you probably have a mattress that needs to be replaced. That's how it goes. And you can get $50 towards select mattresses by visiting casper.com slash crucible and using code crucible at checkout. That's casper.com slash crucible. Offer code crucible for $50 off your mattress purchase. Terms and conditions apply. Now, guys, this next award, this uh, penultimate award is unique because it turns out it's the only crucy that people have been competing for the entire existence of the show. This is a really hot topic here. Yeah, that we, we have not been stoking the fires on this. Our guests are just a naturally bloodthirsty bunch. <laughs> yes, they're thirsty to appear. And those who really, really go for it uh, love to make it known that they that they hold a record at, at any given time. This is the Crucible Radio Award for the most guest appearances. Now, let me do a bit of a... Uh, are we going to vote on this one too? No, 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 we can't. It actually experience. doesn't work out how math wise it's impossible. <laughs> That's not um, how this works. But some of the runners, runners up include John Wisniewski himself. Now, if you count the interviews that were so long, we split it into the two week episodes. Well, then he's got seven appearances, but Ooh, because maybe. that was really recorded in, you know, only four moments, technically not uh, tied for third place is both M. Tashed and Holtzman from the DCP. Wow. They've both been on the show four times, and part of that is because Holtzman so graciously introduced us at GuardianCon 2017, and uh, M. Tashed was at the uh, the Red Bull tournament for Rift when we, when we went and hung out with them in Santa Monica. So it's pretty cool that we've been able to interact with them outside of just, yo, get on Discord. It's been a journey. Now, tied for second place. Now, here's where things get interesting. First person tied for second place with five appearances, Dr. Lupo. Yeah. Other second place finisher. Now, people, are, people know which names we're about to say now. Sports psychologist Steve with five appearances. Which means that the winner for most guest appearances, including our live episode and many, many more, Fallout plays himself with eight appearances on Crucible Radio. Woo! Oh, what a what a what a chap! Uh, you know what they say about uh, about uh, guest appearances? Eight is is enough. You yeah. don't have to do any more after that. You're done. Nine, too many. So if uh, <laughs> something's relevant on our next show, just. Hit us up on Twitter, Fallout. Let us know how you feel about it. Nothing we can do. Okay, guys, should we bring it home? This is it. Number 100 on Birds' list. <laughs> <laughs> it goes from 1 to 100 for the 100 awards that we've given tonight. Uh, yeah, Spielberg actually wanted some of them to happen uh, on the commercial breaks. So all the ones that we didn't mention, uh, the audience saw it, but we weren't able to record it. It's a new policy we're trying out. You'll be able to stream them online. I assume. I don't know. Try Googling it. See what happens. Uh, okay. This is tough. But So each of us decided to pick our winners, but we really wanted to know how the three of us felt. Guys, what was your favorite interview we ever conducted? Hmm. Well, we did invent the Hella Good Advice uh, Award so we could give it to Cap because before we just had this one award and he was my choice. I just thought that was... That was an interview where we took all that unsolicited advice we got after all those bungee interviews. I felt like I really held his feet to the flame. And what we got out was delicious pearls of foot wisdom. Uh, <laughs> it was a great chat. And it was the kind of thing where, you know, typically we record the interviews before we record the chat at the top of the show. This was one of those weeks where um, we just uh, we just knew we're going to do maybe two minutes up top because this is so good. This has to be the entire episode start to finish. Uh, always a favorite for me. But not the winner tonight. Also, Mayan wasn't the winner. Uh, although I did agree on Bones's, for sure. 
Um, and this one, ironically, uh, or uh, not ironically, whatever, uh, Birds wasn't even here for. <laughs> yeah, I have no memory of this. <laughs> yeah, doesn't even listen to the show. Um, was Lupo filling in for Birds as a co-host almost non un- unintentionally because we had planned to have him on and then Birds didn't show and me and Bones were just like, all right, well, you want to be a co-host for an episode? <laughs> well, let's just record. And recording with Lupo that week, that week was so easy and hilarious. And I don't even think it had that much destiny to it. But that was my vote. Yeah, we talked about some Iron Banner, had a good time. Lupo is always really fun to have on the show. That's why we've had him on multiple times. Not as many as Fallout. As we established earlier. Yes. Mm. Uh, but I have, to, I have to say, guys... My favorite interview we ever did, episode 16, was when we got John Wisniewski on the show. And it turns out John's really cool. We became friends with him, and that was awesome. But honestly, that moment kind of changed my life, like in a lot of major ways, and it changed all of our lives. Uh, But it was crazy. We were talking to the guy who made this stuff that we love to play with in this game, and it was a mere, I don't know, four months after we started doing this podcast. Like, we had had some big names on the show and still would continue to do so but nothing was quite like that first experience just like you know getting the details those juicy juicy details of how how the bean gets put in the can you know what i there's mean st- <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. there's a there's stuff from that interview that hit the cutting room floor that you guys as listeners will never ever hear <laughs> but it's sticks deleted. with me until the day i die <laughs> Yeah, and it just, you know, it opened up more opportunities and, you know, put a new light on us in good ways and bad. Uh, People found out that we're not really journalists. It's not actually our job description, but it was all worth it. It was all so much fun and it all, it like, you know, it led to so many more amazing conversations and I think more uh, knowledge to the people who play this game and want to hear about it. I'll I'll never forget playing uh, Prison of Elders with Javier. A uh, friend of the show, an all-around good dude, Javier, uh, and remembering him telling me that the people at Bungie actually listen to our show, yeah, and it blew my mind because that was like right around you know episode ten or whatnot, and I was like, "Do you think you can get them to come on our show?" <laughs> <laughs> and uh, here we are today, two hundred episodes later. Yeah, it's been a wild ride. That was the one where uh, that was the one where I realized that like there's not this. It can feel like there's a giant imaginary wall between the people who make the game and the people who play the game. And then what you realize is that the people who make the game are also people who play the game. They're people who love video games and who take it very very seriously. And uh, you know, making good video games is hard, right? You don't always get it right the first time. There's some stuff that no one's ever gotten right yet. But we realized, I don't know, at least I realized, like, hey, look, we're, we're all kind of on the same page here. We're all sort of in this thing together. We all, we all kind of like Destiny more than our friends and family in real life know what to do with. Uh, we're on the same page. And, um, yeah, I think that's a, that's a real, real treat to have experienced firsthand. Definitely. I think the final Crucible Radio Award goes to us. Crucible Radio, right? Crucible, you gotta give it up. You, you gotta, gotta put that bean in the can. Crucible Radio. Starting catchphrases on episode 190 <laughs> fucking nine. <sighs> well, folks, you know what that means? That means that next week is episode 200. And uh, I believe this one is called... I assume it will be called the very last episode of Crucible Radio. Ain't that some shit? That's some real shit. Last episode of Crucible Radio. The podcast is not going anywhere. The podcast is sticking around. And you know what? In this new world, we'll probably still talk about Destiny from time to time. If we have another opportunity for an interview, we might even do another one of those big interviews. But Crucible Radio, as you know it, is ending next week with a very special episode. I don't even, I'm not even ready to think about it. Um, there's a, uh, a very fun portion of that show that is being put together. Oh, yeah. 
Shit, you're gonna hear speak. that in a in a week from now if you're downloading this on Monday. Holy and, cow! Uh, I'm really excited because we're gonna react to it, kind of live. We uh, we'll have seen a rough a rough draft, but honestly, it's like it's it's like a, a new experience watching it. This was like the most fun thing to do, um, despite the things we put ourselves through. Uh, yeah, it'll be on YouTube the same time episode 200 goes up on Monday. April 22nd. Get ready. Otherwise, that's it. All right. Well, you've got uh, one week left to go to crucibleradio.com. Actually, no, we can keep it up forever. Go to crucibleradio.com. Look at some maps. Buy a shirt. Those shirts are still good. They cover your the entire top half of your body, except mm-hmm. for the bottom half of your arms. And maybe part of the top half of your arms. But the main section of your body, they cover it up real good. And they've got logos on them. Just follow at Crucible Radio. Or if you think, you know what? I need a little bit more of whatever this is. This whole thing. I love it. You can uh, go to patreon.com slash Crucible Radio and listen to CR colon Real World. Where we, uh, we pull back the curtain and talk about our lives a little bit. Some real shit in there. Some real shit. And it's uh, only a dollar an episode, so check it out. It pays the bills. Guys, I'm excited to stop talking in, like, a uh, award show voice. Yeah. I don't know if I can turn it off. Um, yeah, good luck. I, yeah. I, yeah. I, it, it's probably uh, probably Mrs. Burt who needs the good luck. She slapped me in the fucking face. Uh, all right, I'm going to go yell award show voice stuff <laughs> at her first, as <laughs> long as either of us can tolerate. You guys have a good night. Good night. See you next week. One last time, boys. Bye. Bye. What's up, everyone? Bones here. Do you like podcasts? Do you like chill conversation? Well, me and my co-hosts Swain and Birds put out a bonus podcast every month on Patreon. If you want to check it out and be a part of more awesome stuff, head over to patreon.com slash crucibleradio and join the squad. See you there.